guys, it's Rebecca here. Um, I have my September insert from my Minimalist Bujo Challenge. Um, if you didn't follow along, I will post the link to the um, playlist down below. But basically, I went back to the roots of the bullet journal system as per Ryder Carroll's original video and um, used no decorations or anything and just did black and white, messy handwriting for the whole month and posted a video every day. So you can check out that. Um, playlist if you want to see all of those videos, but in today's video I just kind of wanted to go over the things that I learned about my style and about how I like to bullet journal, about um, what elements of the original system work really well for me and which ones I really do feel like I need to tweak in order to get the most out of my life and my planner system. I'm going to go through this insert to show you how the system I used in here is being used here in my October uh, setup and that I have decorated, but I'm still using some of the same framework and planning style and system that I did when I was being minimalist. I use the list format monthly in September because it's really easy to set up and it's not too hard to use either, but I have switched to the grid monthly in my October bullet journal, uh, partly because it kind of looks cool, partly because it's a little bit easier at a glance to really see what your month looks like, I find. I don't feel like I have a real preference either way of list versus grid monthlies. I kind of go back and forth whenever I feel like it. So I've gone ahead with the grid for October and sort of abandoned the Writer Carol list format. One big lesson I learned in September is about the importance of brain dumping. I had pages full of any size task that I just wrote on the same piece of paper and then would move it to where I needed it when I needed it. But I really learned that um, having a place to put random thoughts, plans for projects that you hadn't started on yet, little things that you weren't going to be able to get to yet, um, really anything, having a place to put it right away instead of having to go to the page where it belongs is really important. You can always move it to the page where it belongs after you've written it down in one dedicated brain dump place. So in my October setup, I actually have a whole insert that I use for brain dumping and random note taking. So after I've written down the brain dump, I sit down and I process it all. I move that note into somewhere where it belongs elsewhere, whether it's on a project list, a someday maybe list, or on my daily for that day. Part of the bullet journal system that always appealed to me was having dailies. And while I am decorating in my October setup, the style of the dailies themselves haven't really changed much. The only thing that's different really is that they have a colored header. Other than that, everything is pretty much the same. I decorate my pages more than I decorate my layouts. I don't really have a lot of elaborate layouts, especially when it comes to my daily planning. So I have some more elaborate layouts for evergreen collections and reference pages, but that's in a separate insert. In my planning insert, everything tends to be very simple. And those are the same strategies that I used in my September challenge. But one thing that September did teach me is that I really need to have a weekly tracker to take note of certain things that I have to remember to do every day and have to remember to note down every day. Early on in the month, I took note of those things to the side of my dailies, but I was forgetting which things I had to do, or even if I wasn't forgetting, it was still somewhere in my mind that I might forget. And so I really enjoy having the weekly tracker so that it's not constantly something weighing on my mind. Don't forget to take note of this thing. It's there and I'm not going to forget because it's on my weekly tracker. So I have incorporated a tracker onto my weekly layout in my new bullet journal. And the tracker itself is not super pretty or elaborate, it's really just a grid with the dates across the top and the tasks along the side, and it's actually set up the same way as my weekly task list, which I'll get to in a minute. It really didn't take me long into my September challenge to realize that I really needed a place for my projects, for my videos, um, and for anything that involved more than one task. I really felt like I needed a place to keep those larger tasks so that every day I could turn back to that page and go, how can I work towards my projects today? So in my September setup, that took the form of basically a list of projects. And then I also had a video production schedule page with all of the different tasks for various videos that I wanted to work on um, in different columns. In my October setup, that's taken the form of an actual project insert, and the project list is the index for that insert. 
And then the video production is between my actual video schedule, which is in a collection, and then my production schedule for the week is in part of my weekly layout. In my Minimalist Bujo, I borrowed the format for a habit tracker from Boosted Journal here on YouTube. He calls it the quantity tracker and basically it allows me to track how many times I've done a certain task because I want to try to develop some good habits but I'm not worried about doing them every single day or scheduling them so much as just getting credit for doing them. Uh, this page sort of was a placeholder for me because in my previous setup and again in my October setup that good habit tracker is actually a colorful spread and surprisingly despite it needing so many markers and those markers only living at home and not getting carried around with me I still find that having the colorful spread works better for me and actually in order to remember to fill it out every day I have my habit tracker like my good habit tracker on my weekly tracker for each week. So every day, in order to check off my tracker, I have to check that other habit tracker and fill out anything that I did the day before. So I find just that that reminder really gets me remembering to go back and fill in the colors. Um, because one thing, while I had the tracker in my minimalist setup, I didn't have any reminder to go back and check it every single day, and so I think there's some things that I missed. And I want to get credit for all the things because part of the purpose of that spread is that when I fill up my box with colorful squares, I get to buy myself a treat, and I want to get credit for every single thing I do. I also find that using the colors, filling in the boxes, it just really gives me this sense of accomplishment. And so every morning when I fill in the boxes for the previous day, it encourages me to get some of those things done that day as well so that I can fill in boxes the next morning and get closer to my goal. Finally, for the last week of September, I actually switched away from the monthly, daily format to actually having a weekly spread. And I set it up using the Alistair method, where you have a column for each day of the week, and then you list all of your tasks down the side. And so I was able to assign a task to a particular day. It helps me to kind of know, I'm not going to work on this project today, but I'm going to get it done tomorrow, so I don't have to worry about it today. And just knowing that I have scheduled for myself a time that I'm going to do those most pressing tasks, even if I don't have time for it on that particular day, it really frees up my brain to focus on the tasks at hand. So I found that that Alistair Weekly worked before, I found that it's working again now. I don't always need a weekly spread, but when I do, I find that the Alistair method works really well for me personally. So I have continued to use that in my October setup as well. Really the biggest difference for me between my September minimalist setup and my October decorated setup is that I've been using washi tape to decorate the edges of my pages. And I don't really decorate my dailies as I go. It's not a big part of my daily planning routine. I don't doodle. I don't really do lettering too much. I just like to have the page itself decorated a little bit just to add some color, some interest. I use some stickers. And it just kind of makes the page uh, more welcoming and I feel more uh, interested and excited to open my planner every day to keep an eye on my to-do list throughout the day and really to get things done and checked off so that the page continues to look pretty and since I'm doing my dailies it takes you know four three four five days to fill up a page so I just get to set aside a few minutes every couple times a week to sit down put a little bit of washi tape listen to some music and just relax with my planner and enjoy decorating it and that's just a small little bit of an artistic uh, interlude to an otherwise busy week. And it doesn't take that long, I just find that it's more appealing, um, but also I really realized that during the Minimalist Challenge, I didn't find myself missing the decoration. I was focusing so much on the productivity and on the structure and of the, the purpose of each spread so I didn't worry about not having a pretty handwriting, not having any decoration, not um, having everything look perfect or Instagram worthy. I was looking forward to October partly because I wanted to use the washi tape that I had been collecting and had been sitting in a drawer for a month, um, partly just because I was excited to move into a different size, but not really because I felt like I was missing out on not having the decoration in my September setup. 
So I really think that people who like to decorate in their planners, it's not something that's compulsory and I think a lot of us probably wouldn't miss it if we weren't able to do it. And the beauty of the bullet journal system is that you can go back and forth. If you find you don't need a weekly, don't use a weekly. If you find that you don't have time to decorate that week, then don't. Just grab your one pen and go out the door and get on with your day. It really is an incredibly versatile system and it just allows you to have what you need when you need it. It can be more for you in certain periods of your life and less for you in others. It can be an art journal when you need you know, some downtime to unwind and it can be just about productivity and to-do lists when you're super busy. And that's why I love it so much and I think it works really great for me in all seasons of my life. So thank you again to everybody who followed along in September. Again, I've linked the playlist down below if you want to check those out. Thank you for watching my videos now, and be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss them. I post three times a week. Thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.